you guys want to see what it looks like when you give a 20 year old a task of giving you a podcast topic and watch two 50 year olds try to talk about something very uncomfortable then watch this episode so i apologize for being brilliant <laughs> We're going to divide it into to kind of three bigger chunk. I like uh, that word. What? Chunk. As long as you don't call me chunky, then we'll be okay. It's not a, a true virtual consultation. She wanted to be certain. Okay. That, that Did we address that? So that's, yeah. that's a Sierra disclaimer. No, um, I think I'm irreplaceable. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Beauty and the Brain, the podcast where we discuss all things aesthetics. I'm your co-host, Dr. Chris Crowley. And I'm Jerry Drinkard, family nurse practitioner, and together Chris and I own Skin and Tonic, a med spa located in Pace, Florida. If you guys wanna see what it looks like when you give a 20 year old a task of giving you a podcast topic and watch two 50 year olds try to talk about something very uncomfortable, then watch this episode. I struggle with AI. <laughs> yeah. I struggle with tech, period. This podcast is gonna be all about technology in the aesthetic industry and in the medical industry. And as fascinating as it is, we both were a little bit overwhelmed when uh, Sierra, many of you guys know Sierra, she is um, our right hand, our director of operations at Skin and Tonic and uh, helps us come up with all the ideas uh, for the podcast. So she was like, we should talk about technology in aesthetics. Well, the thing is, like, it's changed so much, so especially since we started, because we've been in this business nearly 15 years, and to see the advances in aesthetic industry, period, is, is really cool. But when you start thinking about the technological advances, it's almost like it was kind of coasting along, and all of a sudden, in the past four years, it's just, like, skyrocketed. And so can you imagine where we'll be in the next 14 or 15 years? No, no, no. It's kind of uh, fascinating to think about. You know I love tech. Um, I always love gadgets. I've always loved, uh, you know, anything related to uh, the, the technological industry. But it is kind of interesting because I do find it a little more challenging to, to learn now and to incorporate new things um, at, at my age now versus even, uh, you know, 10, 20 years ago. So when we were coming up with, uh, you know, things we were going to discuss during this podcast, uh, I think both of us thought, are we going to be able to actually do a whole episode? Because do we know enough about tech in this industry? But the more we kind of discussed it with Sierra and the more that you and I discussed it, we had enough probably to do two or three episodes. And we didn't realize how much we actually use tech. Yeah, we I didn't think, even, I think even realize what tech the, that we've incorporated into our practice now. Yeah, but. from uh, some pretty simple things as far as just online scheduling and then it just goes crazy from there and all the different things that we have. So I think kind of the course, for, uh, you know, for the podcast today, and just so uh, you guys kind of know how we're going to handle it, we're going to divide it into to kind of three bigger chunks. And in each one of those talk about uh, tech that we use either in our practice or that we know is on the, you know, kind of horizon and it's being developed and that we may incorporate into the practice. Um, so you guys can know what to look for either and ask us about in our practice or if you're looking for other providers out there. I like uh, that word. What? Chunk. Chunk. Three big chunks. Chunk. Mm -hmm. As long as you don't call me chunky, then we'll be okay. No, I just kind of like the word. <laughs> so we're going to talk about um, kind of patient satisfaction tech and how we do things to, you know, uh, keep our patients satisfied either through the consultation or the scheduling process. We'll talk about um, procedures and how we're using tech to uh, assist us with different procedures now. And then we'll look um, finally at patient safety because I think we're all about uh, safety um, at Skin and Tonic, but also you know that we both teach a lot and, and safety is our primary focus for anything that we do for our patients. So we're gonna talk about some cool technology that's helping us become uh, safer providers in the aesthetic space. And then we'll wrap up with uh, some questions that we're asked and uh, you know, kind of frequently from our patients that we'll, we'll finish up the podcast with. So let's just start about the patient satisfaction tech. You know, one of those things is gonna be um, using artificial intelligence, our AI and our consultation process. So do you, have you used this? I have, like I've used it personally uh, in a few different situations, especially like we haven't made any bones about like me having surgery in the past. And so I've used it personally from that standpoint and it really makes it easy. Um, but it also, it's, I personally like the one-on-one -on -one contact with a person, but it's very easy, especially at night, at, you know, nine o'clock at night, if you were 
curious about something to go on and do a virtual consult because a lot of these things are just generated, you know, and you can do them at any hour of the day. It does prompt the, the clinic then to give you a call for further follow-up. What about you? Have you used it at all? Yeah, I want to, uh, you know, be, uh, I guess, also clear from the beginning, the things that we talk about, we're also not uh, really saying that this is uh, replacing any of the in-person consultation, obviously, as uh, providers, we can guide you through things very specifically. But the technology has come so far is that we can do these virtual consultations now. Um, yeah, I have used the virtual consultation. I have to be honest, I didn't realize that Sierra had incorporated this into our website until we were preparing for this. So I didn't even know. I'll say she said it's not truly a virtual consultation. Yeah. What? So... What is it? What our website is, is if you go, you can click on a specific body part and it addresses different things that we provide in our clinic. So it's not a, a true virtual consultation. She wanted to be certain. That, okay, that, that we so, address that. So that's, yeah. so that's a Sierra disclaimer. Yeah, so it's only things that we provide in our clinic. So in a consult, we may be able to actually tell you things that you can get at other providers as well. Maybe that the, a, a more appropriate service that we don't offer. But I think it's a good education tool for those patients because a lot of people don't don't know what you can do if you click on arms or legs or, or abdomen. They don't know that there are services that are offered for that. And so it does truly give the patient a basis of what they may want to ask for when they come in or things that they want to learn more about because we have the most educated group of patients now that we have ever had. Mm -hmm. And so I think using these tools that are, are out there does allow patients to kind of delve a little further into it. And so when they come in for their in-person consultation with the, either of us, um, then they really come in with a lot of knowledge. So what about the face app by uh, Galderma? We uh, brought that into the practice um, months back earlier in this year. I know I've used it on my consults, but I don't know, do you use it that often? I don't use it that often. I think it's impressive technology and I think they've done a great job at um, the development of it. It's just something that I don't use a ton. Yeah, so uh, for those of you who may not know what this is, that's an augmented type of reality, I guess is what you would call it, but it's an, an app where you can take photos and simulate what uh, results that patient could could gain by having a certain uh, you know treatment, whether it's neurotoxins or something like Dysport or fillers, and how many vials of fillers it would take to change like cheeks and chin and lips, and they can visualize what they would look like if we done th that uh, series of treatments that, that we're providing there in the app. So that's kind of cool because before we could only kind of verbally describe it to them, and we couldn't really show them photos yeah. and what it would look like with a. I think it's really beneficial for patients to to actually see that because a lot of people, I mean, how many times have we had patients that they're afraid of, of lip augmentation, for instance, and, you know, they don't know that they just see bad lips, if you want to call it that, and so they don't know that that, that would work for them. And so I, th I think when you use the, those apps like, um, like this one we're talking about, I think that it's really beneficial for them to see how important facial balancing is and all the other things. So Galderma has done a great job at that. Yeah, that, I agree with you. You know, I love Galderma and, um, and their product line. And I think this is just one more thing that we've been able to add to the our uh, whole repertoire of things that we can offer in the clinic. Let's skip um, down past the consult and let's talk about also another kind of cool thing that we have on our website that neither of us really understood how it worked is the chat bots. Yeah. What this is, is it allows the patient an opportunity to, to communicate and ask questions 24-7. They get a response, then it may you know, prompt for one of us to, or someone in the office to call them, but it certainly can answer some basic questions. Yeah, I think what's really cool about the chatbots is that they learn based on our input and our responses. So we can see all of those communications. So although this is an, an, uh, you know, a, a bot, answering the questions 24 seven, they're learning from the input that we put into the system and we can see the questions that our clients are asking. We can see what is the typical age range of the, the patient asking the question. And so it kind of gives us insight into what our clients are looking for, what information they're wanting to know. So we can either do a better job at putting that information out there preemptively on the website um, or maybe change some service offerings based on what the questions uh, are, that are being asked for different services. But um, it's kind of amazing to me how it learns your answers and then it will know the next time how to answer that question more appropriately. And it's nice that it's not just a computer generated 
answers, truly answers that come from skin and tonic. Mm -hmm. That you know that these aren't aren't just generic. So right. I think it's important for people to know that that they're not just getting some computer generated response that's you know taken from outer space or wherever it is that people get this stuff. I don't know. Anyway, I do think it's important to know that it, even though you're not directly talking to us, you're still getting responses from us. Right. And if it's something that we haven't been asked or we haven't trained the, the bot on per se, it will be a computer generated response. But we also see that and know that perhaps that needs a, an actual personal phone call to clarify that further, to delve into that further. And so that either gets uh, you know escalated, um, if it can't be something that's simply resolved, it'll get escalated to one of our injectors. And so you do get an answer um, from one of the providers at the clinic. Um, and then the computer learns and it answers more like us as it moves forward. So that's been kind of a cool, cool feature to, to incorporate. We're gonna incorporate it so it answers everyone in my accent. <laughs> yeah, that'll be a real challenge, right? And train to it on understand Jerry. me. Yeah. I said we need a whole um, show on just Jerry isms or Jerry sayings because he has the craziest sayings, and when you combine it with his accent, those are just the ones that come out. You should hear what's going on internally. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna try and move him off of this track right now. So let's get into. Um, the technology with procedures and how it's changing some procedures and aesthetics. Again, like it's it's so nice to have all of these things at our fingertips and we really kind of take them for granted. You know, one of the things that we use as part of our intake process and our initial consultation at the clinic is a sunlight Imaging system. Imaging system. I was, try, I was trying to say treatment and I knew that wasn't right. <laughs> you know, it, it tells us everything from moisture in the skin to deficiency or to pore size and pigmentation issues and redness and brownness. And so, I mean, we would have never had this years back. And so just from a simple five minute consultation, you know, using this device, we can set a patient up for a, for a whole treatment plan for a year even. That's one of my one of my favorite things that we that we do at the office. That is, a lot of people don't even know that that's available. Mm -hmm. Yeah, doing the skin analysis and looking more detail at all the different um, uh, components because some of these things we can see uh, photographically or under different types of lights that we don't even see. Just you know, when we're having a normal conversation with a patient, and it allows us to target some of these things before they become a larger problem and something that's harder to address. So yeah, I agree with you. I love having our imaging systems. Uh, incorporated into the treatment. When we look at some things that, that we don't do, but some of the things that I've read about, and I think it's just fascinating, is looking now at some of the technology with things uh, in the aesthetic space for places that uh, do a lot of uh, hair transplants. And they're using robots now where they can move a lot of these follicles one by one. Um, you know, some of the things that when we were researching this, I saw that they were even doing this for lash extensions now, brow extensions, where they're actually being able to robotically move some of these hairs. So it's kind of fascinating, you know, how they're how they're doing uh, using robotics for different things in the aesthetic space. So again, we do a lot of uh, treatment for thinning hair, but we're not doing any kind of hair transplants or moving follicles at our office. That is meticulous work. To know that something can be trained or developed to do such meticulous work. Some of this nail art that we're seeing that's done, you know, it is pretty amazing just to see like what, what all is available. And like I said, I'm excited to see what's coming up. So we've talked about kind of fun stuff and how the computers and the chat bots can help us, um, you know, with the patient answers or questions, keep them satisfied, how we uh, use this technology maybe in the consultation process. But I, I think probably the most important category is talking about patient safety and how some of the technology is developing to help keep us safer as providers. Well, there's d devices now that, you know, that helps us to to see what we can't see with the, the bare eye. Um, you know, the naked eye we can see beneath the skin and in aesthetics, one of our biggest fears is vascular occlusion. You know, use of ultrasound or vein lights, vein finders, acuveins, and all of these things are, um, you know, it's like at our fingertips, who would have ever thought years ago there was going to be a handheld ultrasound device that you could use in a clinic. You know, I think all of these things are just amazing. Yeah, you kind of answered that quick. You just covered that whole category in like 30 seconds. <laughs> like, I apologize for being brilliant. <laughs> 
So as I mean, you mentioned like one of our biggest things is a vascular occlusion. And I think a lot of patients don't even know that that can occur. And this is where we can get a gel filler into an artery or a vein. Um, but if we get it into to certain arteries, we can cause like a necrosis or death of tissue. It can cause blindness. You can have like parts of your face actually can just turn black and rough, rough and, and even fall off. You can have to have wound management. So a lot of this technology that's been developed is ways that we can look at being safer. So, you know, one, we've always been taught and the way that we learned is you had to be very knowledgeable about your anatomy. And, uh, you know, regardless of how much you know anatomy, we know that every patient is unique and different. And they may not, they may have some variant that's slightly different than what we learned in the textbook. And now with the, the, you know, invention of some of this technology that you just mentioned, we're able to really visualize and see what's under there. Whereas before we couldn't do that. In the past, these ultrasound machines were large. They were, they took up a lot of space and they were, you know, tens of thousands of, if not all the way up to a hundred thousand or more dollars. So it really wasn't practical for a lot of smaller clinics. And uh, now we have these small ultrasound devices that fit in the palm of our hand that Bluetooth connect to our iPads or our iPhones. And we're able to see a lot of these small structures in the face. So before we ever uh, place a needle into a high risk area, we have the ability to visualize that area and, and see, is this artery or, or vein where we anticipate that it would be located? Well, I, I think that also kind of goes back to the patients. We kind of, we talk about it. I think we mention it on every single episode of Beauty and the Brain that it's okay to vet your provider. It's safe to, or good to ask, what are you gonna to do to keep me safe during this treatment? And those are some of the some of the things. I mean, you know, education of the provider, you have to know your anatomy and have to, there's so much variability in the human body that like, how are you gonna determine like if there is a variant? And you can do all that using some of the devices you just talked about. Yeah, and we don't, I mean, again, you know, we learned before that was readily available. And so we learned anatomy and cannulas and injecting on bone. I mean, there's a lot of different techniques that we can do to keep you safe. But I think it's great that, uh, you know, technology is becoming more advanced so we can have these things at our fingertips. Um, I was even seeing recently where they're projecting some of this onto glasses where you can incorporate some of this different technology and have a virtual screen on glasses that you wear. So you're visualizing it in I real time. Um, they have some that are more like uh, augmented reality, I guess. Um, you've probably seen the app on Instagram where people move their face and it overlays what muscles they would be under there. Um, so that's kind of, again, like a simulated, so it's a, a technology that's overlaying what they would expect to be in that location. And they're incorporating that into glasses as well. But with that, it's not a true image of what's under there. So there's still some uh, advances to go to make sure that we're really looking at what that individual patient's unique features are. But as you said in, at the beginning of the episode, it's amazing where we've come over the past decade and to think of where we'll go in the like next where we hit decade. Um, I think we'll all be safer providers and have a lot uh, more custom treatments we can offer our patients. Yeah. With all this that we're talking about in technology, are you afraid that this is gonna replace you? No, I don't think that it's going to replace me, but I do think that there are several positions that could definitely change um, in clinics that are like ours because of AI and not necessarily be eliminated, but I think that there are going to be different avenues for d different things to happen using AI versus using real people. And so what about you? No, um, I think I'm irreplaceable. Of course. <laughs> No, I, I, I don't. I mean, this has been a controversy for a long time, long before um, the AI, like we talk about it now. In anesthesia years ago, um, you know, there's concern about automated anesthesia machines and where it's getting a lot of data from the individual patient. It's looking at a lot of different variables, um, heart rate and respiratory rate and blood pressure and that sort of thing. And it adjusts the anesthesia automatically. And they have this technology where it's saying, do you even need an anesthesia provider there present if we can have a robot that can adjust all of those things. And I know myself and I think many of the people that, that I'm friends with and many of my family would still prefer an uh, individual there because as great as a lot of this technology um, can be, there can be problems with it, there can be errors with it. And I believe in aesthetics, um, we have a lot of uh, ability to improve the safety 
of the, the treatments that we're providing for patients, um, you know, through technology, through education. But I don't think that, you know, when we look at the skills that are actually provided, um, you know, at least at this point in time, I don't foresee this replacing actual, you know, injectors. You have to have someone there to physically do these procedures. Well, it's like robotic surgery has been around for for years now, but you also have to have a very talented surgeon like available when that's happening. And so regardless of where this goes in, in the future, and because I can, I can see injection tools coming out that you know would definitely change the way that we inject, but I don't think that it's gonna replace the talent of, of an injector. I agree. Thank you guys for tuning in for another episode of Beauty and the Brain. We look forward to talking to you again next week. See you soon.